Hi ladies, it's Claire. Uh, day two of the Joanna Basford Magical Jungle colouring book tutorial. It's a follow on from yesterday where we looked at blending. I've zoomed in a little bit closer today because I want you to see some finer detail but you can see just here from yesterday where we we blended the yellow to red colours and also we did some further up the page which you won't see on the video because it zoomed in too much um, of the, the purple to, to lilac -y pink flowers. So what I want to do today is show you how to produce this wet look effect on the leaves and basically why I've zoomed in so much um, is because you will now be able to see some um, patterns on the actual leaves themselves which create that light effect and that's achieved with a blender pencil but I need you to have a really close up look to be able to see how I do that. So I've got, you'll see the pencils on the page, I've got uh, four colours plus my Prismacolor colourless blender. I've got, um, starting from right to left, again I've arranged them in shade in colour from light to dark. I've got grey green light, I've got pale sage, sap green light and a lovely deep cobalt turquoise colour. And what we're going to do is, instead of starting with the darker colour like we did yesterday, we're actually going to start in the middle this time. And we're going to start with the, the lightest colour, which is the grey-green light. Okay, so I'll take these off the page. Okay. So what I'll do is, I'll show you um, how to do this side, because I think if I showed you how to do the, the whole leaf, it would be a bit repetitive and probably too long a video. But you'll get the idea if I if I show you this left hand side and you'll be able to repeat it on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start, as I say, I've got the grey green light pencil. And I'm just going to start by pressing quite hard and following the pattern of the leaves segments. I'm just going to draw an inner circle there. Now this is a very, very light colour but hopefully you might just be able to about to see it and if you can't you can see where my pencil is actually touching the page. Now it's not like yesterday, we're not going to leave a lighter shade around the outside this time. I'm actually pressing quite hard to make that inner colour and I'm going to do the same on this leaf segment. Again following the pattern of the leaf segment itself and you can hear I'm pressing quite hard on that. And then again on this one. And you don't have to be too accurate in your shape. It just needs to kind of vaguely follow the, the outline of the segment because you'll see as we go on that you'll be, you'll be covering quite a lot of this. But it just adds that um, light effect when you get to the end. For this larger segment, again, I'm going to follow the pattern of the segment in what looks like a triangle shape. Okay, so far so easy. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my next um, deeper colour, which is Pale Sage, and I'm going to use a technique called scumbling. And what that is, is you hold the pencil and you make tiny swirls with it. So it's almost kind of like, well, I'll I have, a, have I got a bit of test paper that you'll be able to see? I haven't actually, not that's being video shot, but let's give it a go. So you, you'll see what I mean as I go along. So I've got the, the slightly deeper shade. I'm going to start on the bottom segment. And again, I'm, I'm going to press quite hard. I'm actually just going to go around the edge of that light colour in tiny little circles. And as I say, it's called scumbling. And you'll see why it works so well by the time we've finished. So there you go, and now you'll probably be able to see better on the white page that, that inside of lighter colour because the darker highlights it up a little bit. I'm going to do the same on these leaves. Same technique, just really small circles, pressing medium hard, quite hard. And then we'll do the bigger top one. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the third deepest shade 
which is a really nice colour, it's sap green light. And I'm going to do exactly the same around the edge of the scumbling of the mid green colour. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to scumble. I'm just going to go around, and it doesn't matter if you touch the edge of the leaf segment. You'll see why in a minute when we actually do the deeper highlights. So I'm just going to scumble around the edges again. There we go. It's a really easy technique to use. And as I say, it's quite effective in producing the effect that I want once you take the blender pencil across the top of it. So last one. There we go. Now it gets interesting. I'm going to take my very deep um, cobalt turquoise colour, which you can see is a lot deeper than any of the other three colours that I've used. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to follow the outline of the leaf segment on the inside of the line. So on the inside of the line, I'm just going to Apologies for the barking in the background. That's Freckle the Dalmatian. Um, so yes, I'm going to go around this outline here. And then what I'm going to do in the corners is just highlight a little bit. Just make it a tiny bit thicker. And you'll see why in a second. And it, and it looks rough at the moment, but don't worry, I want it like that. And I'm pressing quite hard because I want a lot of this deeper colour on because what we're going to do is we're going to spread it across here with the blender pencil. So, blender pencil. I wanted to show you the, the, the tip of the pencil because as you can see it's got um, a slight purple coloration on it which is from yesterday when I blended the purple flowers. Um, if you put this straight onto the green you'd get purple onto the green, the green colouring. So what I'm going to do is I've just got a little blue cloth here and I'm just going to wipe the end of that pencil. It's clean now so you won't get any discoloration on this, this new set of colours. So this is the clever bit. What we do is we're going to use single strokes going up over and down over. And what that will create is um, these lines here. And what I want to do is you can see these lines are vertical and these lines of kind of horizontal. And that's because if you think about the shape of the leaf, you're going to follow the pattern of the segment. So it makes it look more 3D, it makes it look more realistic. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take my, my blender pencil and just go like that. And you can see instantly that it's taken that deeper colour through the light. So I'm just gonna do that again and it's single swipes. So you don't go backwards and forwards, you just kind of do single swipes like that. And I'm doing um, vertical stripes here because this part of the leaf is clearly facing down over. So I'm going to go to the top and just do the same from the top down and you will start to see that you start to get that lovely shiny effect in the middle of the leaf. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the um, pale sage colour which is the, the second, it's the middle colour that's there and just on the edges colour that up a little bit so that it leaves the very centre of the leaf in the palest shade and to be honest you don't really need to, to blend it any further than that because as I say the blender pencil's not blending you're actually using it this time to create an effect so what I'll do is I'll quickly repeat that for the other segments so that you get the idea. <laughs> so this time I'm going to go again around the inside of the segments and like, like I say you don't have to be too accurate because the blender pencil takes all of the roughness off the edges and this is a lovely colour this deep cobalt green, uh, cobalt turquoise rather sorry. Now then because this segment is facing that way instead of down over let me just put a little bit of extra thickness there. What I'm going to do is instead of using downward strokes, I'm going to use strokes that go across the page. 
again single strokes not going backwards and forwards from this side as well and then you can see it makes that really really nice shine effect almost as if you can see the veins of the leaf again I'll take my pale sage colour and just brighten around the edges so that you still get the, the light colour in there Okay, so you probably get the gist by now, but what I'll do is I'll finish off the leaf or on the left hand side and then you can see what one side looks like. So again, I'm just colouring in inside the line. I'm pressing quite hard. I'm just going to follow that line round. Make it a little bit wider in the corners. And again, because this segment is coming this way, my blender lines are going to go like that and this is a slightly longer segment so you can pull it further into the middle colour and you can do this as much as you like depending on on how big an area you want to make the leaf look shiny so if you only wanted like a tiny piece of, of, of shine in the middle you can um, use more of the, the, the middle green colours um, and have less of the the deeper cobalt colour but I like the cobalt colour so I use I use quite a lot of it. Now then this last segment is going to be slightly different in the same way that this leaf segment goes down over this kind of goes up over and, and out over at the same time so you can see on here that I've kind of curved it a little bit so I'll show you how to get that. So again last time we're gonna quickly roughly draw around the inside of that edge and actually this is a good point you can see that I've very very slightly gone over that line there um, I have a Tombow Mono Zero Eraser which has a very fine tip and because it's very fine I'll just take that off the end I can go very very close up to that line and just take that tiny error off That's by far the probably smallest mistake I've made. I've dropped some proper clangers, but never mind. Hopefully not on this one. Um, right, so I'm just going to quickly do this line here. There we go, put a little bit in there. And then what we're going to do is, for this top one, as I say, we're going to try and follow that shape of the leaf but kind of curve it instead of straight lines and again from this side and it just gives you that feel of following the flow of the leaf pattern so it really makes it kind of 3D so these are curved instead of kind of straight strokes and again I'm just going to use my pale sage just to go around the edges of that and just make that inside piece shine a little bit more and that is about it for wet look leaves obviously uh, later I'll colour in this other side and it'll be exactly the same principle of course in in reverse so this segment you would go down this these two segments would come this way in terms of blending and then the same principle, you would just do the curves in the in the mirror reflection opposite way. I was going to leave one of these segments blank because the next tutorial I want to do is to show you how to do a rain droplet that's sitting on a leaf. But I think because these segments are quite small, what I'm going to do is do the raindrop tutorial on one of these larger leaves because it'll be easier for you to, to, to see, I think. Okay, um, again, if you've got any questions on wet look leaves, drop me a line. You, you don't have to stick to, to turquoise. As you can see up here, I've done the same technique on this different shaped flower in uh, pinks. You won't be able to see the pencils because they're off the video page, but again, I'll give you the Prismacolor pencil references. The very inside lightest shade, actually I'll put them into shot for you, is Deco Pink. Then we have the mid pink shade, is just a pure pink colour and because these segments are smaller 
I'm only using three colours instead of four. So my deep colour for, for this family is actually a lovely deep magenta colour. And then what I've done is, just to do something a tiny bit different around the edges, so you can see I've used a, a light green here, and that is actually um, chartreuse green. I think that's how you pronounce it. Please, anybody who knows better, correct me. Um, and as I say, you can, you can use that technique on, on any shape of the leaves. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. So, I hope that's been useful. As I say, the next step will be to kind of hopefully show you some raindrops. Uh, so I hope you join me then. Thanks, ladies. Bye.